Hey, what's going on? It's Mocha for the Roz and Mocha Show, Kiss 92.5 and Kiss92.5.com. Sitting here with the one and only Will I Am. Welcome back to Toronto, man. Hey, what's up, Mocha? Uh, good to have you back in our city. I noticed on your, your Twitter account you said that uh, you tweeted that you were on the same flight into Toronto as Justin Bieber. Uh, when you are on a flight with a, a celebrity, another celeb, especially when it's a musician and you get in conversation with them, you find you guys talk about normal things or you talk about the possibility of doing uh, collaborations or if you've done collabos in the past that uh, you want to work on more stuff together? No, I wait till they're asleep and I take pictures of them <laughs> and then blackmail them later. I'm yeah. joking, no, I don't say anything. This is love, this is love, this is love. Can you feel the love? And uh, the new single, This Is Love, I mean, blowing up everywhere. You gotta be proud of that, that track. That's probably the most proud I've ever been in my life. Yeah, more than anything that you've ever done uh, with the group, with the piece? More than anything I've ever done. To have a song that's succeeding uh, in the charts outside of your group, because a lot of times people think you only can be successful in, your, in the thing you built. Yeah. You're only supposed to fly airplanes. Don't ever get in a boat. Like, well, why can't I be in a boat? I built a nice boat. How long did it take for willpower to come together? Because with the amount of stuff that you've been doing, whether it's you know traveling, producing, songwriting, DJing, uh, everything else that you have going on in your life, when do you have the time to work on your own project? Uh, willpower, I wrote a song yesterday that, man, this song I wrote yesterday is dope. Yeah. Like, to me, I like it. Maybe you guys, ain't, you know, maybe you won't like it, but I like it. Yeah. And I was like, should I stop recording? Because I'm on a, I'm on a roll here. Because yeah. two days before that, I wrote another song. But I always do that to myself. And then next thing you know, there's like 400 songs later. So, so willpower, making music, that's, Hey, I don't go to sleep till about six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, sleep for about four hours, wake up and go to work. <clears throat> so work for me is philanthropy, you know, meetings about technology, and then I go to studio at five o'clock. Cause the DJ got me walking on the ceiling. I got a rocket for the gold. Bomb it just go. Fill it up with love and then I watch it explode. We Black Eyed Peas were successful, and I, I told everybody in, uh, in the record company and the group, like, we need to go over here yeah. to, to this new movement that's popping off called Electro. And the people that are the most influential people are these DJs that you probably don't know about. T.I.M., um, um, Boys Noise, Benny Bonanzi, Freddie Legrand, all these guys that were invisible at the time. So I was like, we need to go over here. And at the time we would go to these underground DJ clubs and people were like, what are you guys doing here? You know, and we had a fight to make our way and earn our keep in this community, in this dance community. And, you know, and the way we did that was honoring the, the culture and collaborating with the, the, the movers and the shakers and the tastemakers of that community, the DJs. And I got a feeling is I saw, I smelled something. I was like, whoever takes dance music and takes this underground culture and puts it on radio wins. Because at the time, dance music was the biggest thing in the world, but it was all underground. And it wasn't on top 40 radio. You, everybody knew um, World Hold On by uh, Bob Sinclair, but nobody really knew what he looked like. Everybody knew now that the love is gone, but really didn't know what. Chris Willis looked like, or David Guetta at the time. I was like, yo, man, this is this movement right here. Whoever does that, dang, dang, dang. So I called David Guetta on the phone. Like, yo, man, I want to collaborate. And so I was just hunger and passion and, and seeing something and smelling this, this, this new thing that was gonna come and have the balls to go and try to bring it. I, I saw it. It's like, I remember it. I would go to all these little underground clubs and go to Visa and go to Europe and it was big in Europe but not anywhere else. And Vegas was, Vegas was weird at the time because Vegas was only, they, they, 
people went to Vegas to gamble and they were losing money because entertainment clubs weren't clubs yet. Like, and then after it was all over radio, Vegas became what it is now. Um, America's Ibiza. Yeah. It wasn't really, really America's Ibiza in 2007. Yeah. If you went to party, it was cool, but it wasn't DJ after DJ after DJ after DJ, billboards of DJs and DJs. I remember when I went to Ibiza, I got off the airplane and I drove down to the hotel and there was billboards of DJs. Yeah. There was, at, at that point in time, in 2007, there was billboards of Celine Dion, billboards of all of these, you know, older pop groups who, didn't have a career on Top 40 Radio, and where you go and retire is Vegas. Yeah. So now you go to Vegas, you see DJs, you have Eric Murillo, you have all these guys. What? Top 40 Radio, I remember I saw it. That was fresh, so that's what I hear. Think of. I got a feeling it's following your gut, and doing things that you know people say maybe you shouldn't do, but your gut tells you it's, you should do it. There you go, Will I am. thank you so much, man. Welcome back to Toronto. Thanks, dude, good to be back. T-Dot.